This is the first in a series of videos that will describe Garden of the Gods as a public lands natural resource and a citizen science initiative um, to monitor restoration efforts in the garden. Garden of the Gods Park in Colorado Springs, Colorado is owned by the city. It's a national natural landmark and it is the busiest city park in the United States. Aside from its amazing geologic features, the park has several vegetative communities that coalesce in the park. Uh, there's the Great Plains grasslands meeting up with the pinyon juniper woodland forests and in the background um, and in the western edges of the park this pinyon juniper forest uh, transitions into the mountainous forest ecosystems of characteristic of our high mountain peaks in Colorado. And in the background here in the picture, you're looking at uh, Pikes Peak, a 14,000 foot peak, of which there are 54 in Colorado and none anywhere else in the contiguous US. The 300 million years of geological history in the garden reveal one of the most extensive pictures of Earth's history found anywhere in the United States. Preserving the park and managing the impacts associated with such extraordinary levels of use have been an exceptional challenge for the city of Colorado Springs. Uh, the park is only two square miles and two million people visit the park every year. And we are constantly debating how they reach this two million <laughs> visitors a year number. We think it's a lot higher since there's no formal entry point to the park. Um, so. As far as we can tell, we as in restorationists in the park, uh, there would be no way to actually measure how many people are there. But uh, just to give you some perspective, Rocky Mountain National Park is 265,000 acres or 400 square miles and 3 million visit, people visit the park a year. Um, they do measure the users more closely in the national park because there is an entrance. Um, that all cars have to travel through. So what does this mean? The Garden of the Gods visitor density is a hundred times greater than that of Rocky Mountain National Park and national parks are well known to be um, highly visited national treasures in America. So in the garden you can engage in a number of recreational activities including hiking, running, biking, horseback riding, dog walking. They have a rental program for segways. You can road bike on the um, road trails. And of course you can drive and ride your motorcycles throughout the park. So most of the trails in the garden were established in the 1930s and they were never designated um, to accommodate or never designed to accommodate the current level of use. Many of the climbing access trails, for example, are just straight climbs to the base of rocks um, and they don't have any uh, consideration for the surrounding topography or the effects of water. These social trails have become conduits for erosion, um, resulting in downcut trails and deep gullies that in some areas are two feet below the surrounding terrain. To make it all worse, um, the soils in the park are the most erodible soil type in El Paso County. Um, so what damage is done by human impact is exacerbated greatly by the um, soil texture. In 2002, Rocky Mountain Field Institute, a nonprofit stewardship organization in the county, initiated the Garden of the Gods Community Restoration Program. This was a result of a two year study of the ecological state of the park. Since the program's inception, Rumfi has mobilized over 15,000 volunteers who have contributed over 72,000 hours towards the park's restoration initiative. And uh, this amounts to $1.65 million worth of on-the-ground restoration work. 
The goals of the uh, restoration program are to provide stewardship opportunities for a broad spectrum of individuals, organizations, schools, businesses, etc. in the community, to foster community awareness about ecology and natural history in the garden, to educate the community about the current threats to the park, and to complete critical restoration work in the most severely degraded areas of the park. So while there has been a great deal of restoration work accomplished in the Garden of the Gods, the monitoring efforts of this restoration work have fallen short of the intended goals of the uh, Community Restoration Program. So this project uh, really is designed to increase monitoring and to put the monitoring into the hands of the community members, the citizen scientists who cherish the garden so much. Um, so the leading restoration monitoring questions are for this particular segment. Um, we also have other segments that address vegetation and noxious weeds, for example. So looking just at the trails and the effects of erosion, how does the trail change over time? How do slope and aspect relate to trail tread depth and width? And how do structures slow the rate of change on a trail? Is this correlated with slope and aspect? And there are lots of different trail structures. You've probably walked over them and never even noticed, but there are underground structures, there are check dams, there are steps, there are water bars, all sorts of uh, implemented structures to achieve the goal of getting the water off the trail to reduce erosion. So while citizen scientists will collect the baseline monitoring data, um, the next step of the project would be to engage in scientific research, restoration ecology research, uh, and to publish this for the benefit of the greater scientific community. So the research objectives are to create a long-term monitoring set that records trail depth and width over time, so a longitudinal data set, and we want to analyze the effects of slope and aspect on trail dynamics over time and compare the depth and width before and after structures are implemented. So it is possible that you've read already about the concept that a lot of monitoring efforts fall short because they have failed to collect any baseline data before restoration has occurred. We can prevent that because we know Rocky Mountain Field Institute workers, we know when structures will be put in by the staff and volunteers um, and we can monitor before those structures go in and after. What we will specifically be asking citizen science to learn how to do and to enact are um, data collection protocols that involve measurement, so we want to measure the trail depth and width over time, measure the slope and aspect of a trail, and that pretty much has to be done only once. And then we want to collect photo point data over time. Um, having photos that show the change on the landscape is probably one of the most telling pieces of data that uh, organization can collect. So uh, in the literature, the primary argument against citizen science is the concept that untrained individuals cannot collect data of the same caliber as scientists. There are examples to refute this concept, but my argument is that the training initiatives are not, um, they're not designed to really train citizens in the way that you, college students, are being trained uh, to learn a discipline. So through the development of instructional videos and on-the-ground mentoring, uh, we hope to achieve these learning objectives for citizen scientists. We want the scientists to know before they enter the field how recreational impacts affect trails and their environs. 
we want citizen scientists to be able to describe the effects of erosion and identify erosion in landscape photos. We want citizen scientists to be able to identify the flora and fauna present on the landscape because, of course, ecology is a discipline um, that concerns both the living and non-living segments of the landscape. We want citizen scientists to be able to define slope and aspect and know how to measure it. And we want them to be able to take tread depth and width measurements in the field and record them in a data sheet. Uh, so when we, the conservation biology class, goes out to the garden next week for our field trip, we might have time to test run some of these trail measurement protocols. Uh, we will definitely engage in the original monitoring of vegetation. We'll use quadrats along a transect to measure the vegetation in various landscapes in the garden. Um, but Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully this gave you a good introduction to our field experience next week. And remember that as you engage with me and you go out in the field, you're not only learning, you are helping me to learn. I'm a PhD student and um, citizen science training is the topic of my dissertation. So any feedback that you have would be greatly appreciated. I will also share with you the rest of the slides that will be used um, to produce the additional instructional videos, but I'm not going to make the videos before I get to spend time with you because I'm sure I will have ample opportunity to take lots of great pictures when we're out there next week. So I look forward to it. I hope you do too. Let me know if you have any questions. You can email me um, or, you know, pass a message along through Dr. Mooney. Thanks.